All right, everyone. Thought I'd give you a little update on the old dark ride. It's been a, a long time coming here. This bus bar system has really, really been tricky. But what I've ended up with is basically some metal steel strapping uh, that I ordered from Granger. That has been uh, that's normally used for wrapping freight boxes uh, and stuff like that. It's a quarter and a quarter and one and a quarter inches uh, wide, which is perfect. And basically what I've done is I've had it sandblasted to take the paint and the coating off. So I just have sheet metal there, or raw metal. And uh, flipped it on its side and have basically followed the symmetry of the track all the way around. And the shoes that I've come up with that seem to be working pretty well right now are just basically, as you can see right there, two spring-loaded... Uh, there she goes. Took off. Uh, two spring-loaded pieces of wood. They've got some metal wrapped around them, and uh, they're pretty. They work pretty well, as you can see. They're spring-loaded here, so they're always riding up against the track, and they also float side to side and pivot to follow the curves. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. Uh, and I've also got the test loop hooked up to the ride control system. It is a mess right now, but this is just for testing to make sure everything works all right. As you can see right now, she's currently sitting, my screen tells me she's currently sitting at the unload area and my unload light is flashing because my load area is clear, there's no vehicle there, so pressing this should, in theory, bring the vehicle up to the load area and stop it. And there we go. And as you can see now, load area is clear uh, or load area is occupied with a vehicle, unloads free, and, ooh, dusty, and because there's no vehicle in the dispatch zone, which is right there, uh, we've got a green light, and also because our load interval, our dispatch interval, which is currently set at zero, um, I can set any of the intervals here, how long it waits in each of the zones. Right now, interval is set at zero, so it doesn't wait at all for being able to send the next vehicle as long as the next zone is free. But the dispatch wait time I have it set at five seconds and that's because uh, there'll be a show scene that takes place once you get set into the ride and I need to be able to adjust those. So these are all the different timers I can change on the fly for show scenes. I've also got a counter here for Halloween night so I know approximately how many times I've sent people into the ride. Right now I'm at 20 for testing. So. Like I said, because we're sitting at the load area, dispatch area is free, load area timer is done. I got a green flashy light, should bring the vehicle up to the dispatch area and stop it there for five seconds and then it will take off into the ride. Now, because of the way that these proc sensors work, which are these little orange things that you see throughout the track, um, I'm gonna be swapping these over probably to limit switches because they are proc sensors have got a four millimeter sensing distance on them right now. And uh, that's a little close tolerance for what I need. So because of the way that this metal bar, which is right here, this is what's flagging those sensors as it travels around the track. The sensors that are on a cord or an arc like that don't get flagged correctly, telling the system that the vehicle is actually there. So, um, it doesn't supply power to that part of the track because it doesn't see the vehicle. Which is why I'm probably gonna swap over to limit switches because uh, they can work on a cord or on an arc like that. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's why we're just gonna give this a whirl and uh, see what goes on here. So let's advance this up to the dispatch. So there she'll sit for five seconds. You can see the timer's running for and there she goes into the ride. Oh, she took off. And what will happen is she'll get all the way to the end of this zone and stop right there. Again, because of the way the sensors are getting flagged, it's supposed to hit this one and it doesn't because of the arc that it's swinging. So if I just give it a little bit of help, she takes off and parks at unload. And there we go. Made a full cycle. And there we are back at unload, ready to take off again. And this will sit for five seconds. And we're off and running again. And there we go. 
So, there she goes. So basically at this point I am finished with testing for as uh, much as I can tell. My next process is to tear this all up, store it, and basically since I know these dimensions and everything work is to use the rest of that wood to finish the rest of the track. Right now I have 10 squares done, each square is 3x3. Three three. The total track is 25, it's 5x5. Five five. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will go here and then fill up the rest of this area as well. So now that it's uh, the testing is complete, I can just cut out all the rest of the little pieces like Legos. And uh, once we get closer to September, October, I'll start assembling them all and get into full testing. But there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. She's coming along.